Welcome to this Tobacco University video where I'm going to go over ozone generators if you're looking at reducing the odor with, associated with cannabis production. So if you've come here to learn more about ozone generators, you've come to the right place. Here in Tobacco University, let's get into ozone generators for odor control in cannabis production. So first off, ozone generators, no surprise, use ozone. And ozone is this O3 molecule, which is simply three oxygen molecules bonded together. This will remove odors from your growth space. Ozone can reduce contamination, such as mold, bacteria, odors, as well as some pests. Ozone generators should be appropriately sized to match your growth space and or ducting system and are the most technologically advanced method for odor removal. We see just a basic little diagram here of what's going on inside the ozone generator. We can see the incorporation of UV light, fans to help move air through again and reducing the odor um, through this process. So a word of caution if you are considering uh, utilizing an ozone generator. They should only be used in commercial applications in areas that are unoccupied. If you look right here, I circled it on the unit itself, it says warning, use only in unoccupied spaces. This is because an EPA report warns uh, regarding ozone that when inhaled, ozone can damage the lungs, relatively low amounts can cause chest pain, coughing, shortness of breath, and throat irritation. Ozone may also worsen chronic respiratory diseases such as asthma and compromise the ability of the body to fight respiratory infections. This is why using unoccupied spaces absent of humans or animals in general. Now the ozone generation limits uh, and the limited benefits. So the FDA or Food and Drug Administration limits the amount of ozone put out by indoor medical devices to 0.05 parts per million. That number falls below the amounts needed to provide any antibacterial and any antifungal benefit. So when we're looking at the generation levels of um, ozone, while the output for indoor ozone generators may be minimal, Higher levels can accumulate indoors, depending on the circumstances of the growing environment. A 1995 EPA study found that when run on, on high with the doors closed, some ozone generators produced a concentration of 0.2 parts per million to 0.3 parts per million. This is four to six times higher than the FDA recommended standards. So again, keep in mind of the generation levels that occur with, to the levels they occur and the threat that they could uh, pose to those in the area. Now, ozone is not just hazardous to the animals or humans uh, in the area, it also could be potentially damaging to the plants. Ozone generators can damage plants in indoor environments. High levels of ozone can inhibit plant stomata, which are responsible for water and gas regulation in the plant. Signs of ozone damage on your plants will be chlorosis, which is yellowing due to insufficient chlorophyll production, necrosis, which is dying um, of cells, and stipples, which is tan irregular spots. And we see some of those represented here on this example leaf. So if you are looking at um, potentially adding an ozone generator to reduce your odors, keep in mind of some of these other um, environmental impacts you might want to consider to make sure it's a best fit for your growing environment. 